Traceback and Debug are two functions commonly used in R to debug your code. Traceback prints the current call stack, and Debug takes a function as an argument so that you can step through it line by line. In this video, I'll demonstrate both the Traceback and Debug functions. So we'll start by describing the functions I've created to demonstrate the Debug and Traceback functions. So first I've created this inc function, which increments the value it's given by 1. And likewise, there's a dec function for decrementing by 1, which I do here, and the reciprocate function, which I call recip. So it takes an argument. If the argument is 0, it generates an error by calling the stop function with an error message, division by 0 will occur if I try to take 1 divided by the argument. So if a is 0, there's a division by 0, but I catch that here and do the stop explicitly. And then I have this function myfunc, a fairly arbitrary function that serves no uh, explicit purpose. I just increment the value it's given by 1, take its reciprocal, and then likewise I do a decrement by 1 on it, take the reciprocal, so I have these two variables x and y to hold the values, and then I multiply them. And that result is what I get for my funk. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate certain values of my funk. There's actually two of them that will generate an error or will get this division by zero problem. So first I'll run the code to make sure my functions are in the global environment. And I'll clear that, and then I'll call my funk on 10. And that gives me a result. Everything works. But if I give my funk 1, in this case, the decrement by a will turn this 1 to 0, and then it will try to take the reciprocal. And we'll get this division by 0 will occur. Likewise, if I give it minus 1, I have a problem on this line of code, and I'll get the same error. Now if I want to see exactly where, or exactly the path taken through the functions, I, I use a traceback, and that'll give me the hierarchy of calls. In this case, I call my func, and it calls the reciprocal on the increment of a, and then it calls the stop division by zero will occur. So here's where the error occurred on this line. So if I go see the number 13 here refers to the line number. So I get this if a is equal to 0, stop. So I know where it happened and the calls that preceded this error. So I know if I increment a by 1 and then take its reciprocal, it's going to generate this error. So traceback does give me some information. Another thing I can do if I want to know the exact line that fails on, I can do a debug. So a debug takes a function as an argument. In this case, I want to use my func, and then hit enter. And then the next time I run my func, it will stop. So here, the program enters this interactive browse mode. And then if I type n in the browse in the console, it steps forward, and if I hit N again, this is the line that has the problem. So I see here the program failed on this line of code. Now I'm going to run, run it again just to demonstrate a few things. If I use the C function, it just continues executing the program as if nothing happened. So it doesn't step through line by line, it continues running. If I go into browse again, if I want to stop, I hit and for next line, if I want to quit out of browse and stop the code right then and there, I use this capital Q. So Q will quit out of the browse. And those are your main debugging commands that you can use to debug your own code. And one last thing, to stop debugging, I can run undebug on my func. And this will stop it from debugging. So if I run my func again, it will just run normally. I can also do debug once and give it uh, my func. So the next time my func is run, it will debug, but then it will be run back in normal mode. So I can do my func 
let's say we'll give it 10. This will in, enter the interactive browse mode. I go next, next, and step through. At any point, I can put a variable in the browse and it will give its current value. And if I hit next again, that completes the function and the program is finished. Now, if I run my func a second time, it runs normally because debug once only puts it into the interactive browse mode the first time it's run. And that concludes this introduction to debugging our programs with the tracepack and debug functions.